Hi, I'm Dr. Hernani Manalo from Higher Colleges of Technology, Dubai Women's Campus, United Arab Emirates. Hi, my name is Therese and I'm a college instructor from the University of Santo Tomas. Hello everyone, my name is Margaret. I'm a second grade teacher here in Southern California. Hello everyone, I'm Agatha Ilagan of Sacred Heart College. Only the true, sincere, passionate teacher would really be able to endure, go through and survive all this. And I believe that these teachers who are set foot on this very tough, challenging time right now are that kind of teacher if they are really pouring their heart, their soul, their time, their effort into putting together material materials for their kids, their hearts are genuine. We are a resilient being and we can recover fast. Always set good example. Start the class on time, but be worried that some students might come in late because of the internet issues. And while online, right at the start, bring in positivity to the class. The students are already experiencing home fatigue so that so do not jump to the boat immediately so at the start i was against online classes because i believe that it cannot replace the regular class that i'm doing for more than two decades but in the present circumstances like this we have no choice but to learn how to do online classes for hours in front of the camera is really draining us. So make it a habit to keep yourself away from the cam once your job is finished. Close it in my case, take a deep breath, drink coffee or juice if you must, eat if you must, look at the sunshine and look elsewhere. It's really draining us and we can feel it and we cannot afford ourselves to be totally drained because we have many responsibilities to do. So shift from technology focus to a real life focus. Um, not distinguishing or not um, putting a demarcation between your personal and professional life is very unhealthy for you. You can see this room is actually my home office and this is what it looks like. I know it's not much, but it is uh, a sanctuary for me because because it separates the feeling of you know being with my family and being by myself, uh, and so that is actually very good for my mental health. For us educators, business goes on. There is actually not much different from what we were doing months ago. We still teach our students, engage with them, assess their papers. We still do prepare course materials and perhaps still stay overnight for the following day's work. The only difference is that the platform of teaching delivery, thanks to technology, our voices are still heard miles away for our audience, for our students you have to make a daily breakdown of what you are supposed to do. Take up the plan for the first five minutes during your pep talk. Remember the Gagnis principles, gaining attention, um, prior recall, setting objectives, put that into your mind. And then put the five minutes Q&A so that you will able to leverage where your students are how much they have learned and how much they have not learned, then pause and proceed to lecture. There is actually an app called um, Microsoft Expression. So Microsoft Expression is actually a free tool for Windows 10 that you can download and use. So as I'm recording this video, I'm actually using um, Microsoft Expression as well. So. Um, I recommend it to fellow um, teachers if you want to pre-record your lectures uh, and you are uh, using Windows 10, this is uh, free and please use it. There's a lot of um, tutorials online that can help you 
start using this one. Also, if you're wondering if you are recording in a noisy environment, I'm also going to suggest a tool called Crisp. So in Crisp, this is again a free software that you can download wherein the pickup is only your voice. Um, it's not going to pick up, it's actually going to filter out all of the unnecessary noises in the background. I had my first summer online class. It was a challenging one since I have four to six students who were also new in the platform. So what I did was to do Google Meet prior to online classes and ask them their concerns and expectations about the class and also gave them the quorum in taking online classes. This pandemic, however, reminds us not to neglect the basic of things in the teaching. And what is that? Planning. The very important component of what we do is to plan. When we become experts in our field, we tend to take delivery plan for granted. Inside the classroom, we know we can execute things out of thin air, but in technology-based teaching, it is difficult if we don't have plan because we have nothing to make us our blueprint in our execution. Since we are teaching from home, it is essential to start with a good plan to ensure better engagement with our students. Remember the 80-20 rule, 80% 80 planning, 20% execution, and this is really applied. So here are some of my few takeaway points. Number one, of course, a plan. And the plan will be divided into two. The first is a good plan for yourself as a teacher, as an educator. While you are teaching from home, psych yourself as if you are going to your class every day. Remember your home is your virtual classroom now. In UST, first and foremost, we have two kinds of instruction. We have synchronous and asynchronous learning. So for synchronous, that is um, live online classes that we usually do using um, an actual platform, which is called um, Blackboard Co Collaborate. When we conduct the classes, uh, all of them are online, um, except for the ones who could not access the internet. Now that's the time that the second approach, which is called asynchronous learning, is um, used. So what we do um, via asynchronous learning is that we usually give them uh, materials, references, uh, whatever um, tools that they need in order for them to be able to catch up and study what we are already discussing online. And so in my case, what I did for asynchronous learning is I actually pre-recorded my lectures and I called it lecture videos and I uploaded it in YouTube and then posted it in this actual platform. So I'm going to show you. So as you can see here, uh, I'm going to use as an example, unit two. All right, so as you can see, and uh, there is a part here that is labeled lecture videos and some other parts here that are just files. So for files, these are just the PowerPoints that they can actually download and study as we go. Right. And for the other one, we have the lecture videos. This is what I was talking about earlier. So I just posted all of the lectures for all of the chapters that I was to discuss for this unit. So what they are, they are left to do is to just click this one. There is a prompt that will come out. Uh, they can actually just play this if they want to, or they can actually click the actual link and they can go to YouTube. So Seesaw is an app that um, you, you set up an account for. So you put together, see, you sign up as a teacher and you put together a class and you add in the names of your students in it and from there you it's like really a virtual classroom except that you don't see each other and it's a platform for me to use to assign the activities that way they don't have to go from one site to another and this is what gets parents go crazy because 
they just want something that's just going to lead them directly to what they have to do and everything is just there they don't have to go from one place to another and I completely understand I would want that same thing for myself this also made it easier for me to grade skill grade the assignments that I give out my kids Yeah, reach out to your students, of course, uh, understand them, be extra patient. Um, but again, also set limitations. I know it's easier said than done, but it has to be done. We do have to set our limitations. First, you need to plan ahead or weeks ahead before the start of the class. Number two, make your lectures short and include only essential competencies because even college students have short attention span. Be creative and plan student-centered activities. And of course, students love challenges. So make sure you keep them busy and excited to attend the class. And uh, lastly, be extra considerate, especially to students who have problems with internet connectivity. So as educators, let us all help each other in efforts to ensure that learning continues even outside the classroom at the time of this global crisis so we can all say that we are all ready to a new norm. It's very challenging when you're preparing for all subjects and you're trying to figure out and think of how you're going to send out materials, how you're going to make these students learn, how you're still going to teach, how you're going to make them understand a new concept, grasp a new skill. So all of these things are really bombarding it was tough dealing with technology fatigue and both our students and ourselves we are experiencing it right at the start of our online class during the first two weeks we conducted a survey every day the ratio was 80 to 20 80 percent for faculty and also for the students are excited of teaching online, working from home, and only 20% are a little unexcited. But after one month, the number changed. It's 50-50. This is because of technology fatigue. Uh, you know, we are all trying to survive and cope. Uh, just be open enough um, to admit to yourself that you also need help. You are a teacher. Um, we're not superman that we can do everything and anything without rest and without consideration i think it's important that we have to take care of ourselves have an office corner in your home do not teach while you are in your sofa or bed unless you are up to for experiment maintain a good office environment we tend to really think about the, the concern that we have for our students but the thing is I think we tend to overlook our own needs and that's what I really realized during this pandemic because we are human as well we tend to overcompensate by you know um, giving much consideration to our students or maybe uh, sometimes over release materials as well that will overwhelm the students um, either way this is actually a manifestation of our stress and I came to realize that when the, the online remote working started, uh, I was also stressed. It is really hard and there's no easy way out yet. For our fellow junior teachers, so I think it's also equally important that we share our knowledge to our um, senior teachers who, are, who I know are very stressed in adjusting to this situation i think it's important that we help each other out let's just see this as an opportunity for us to become better teachers because every challenge and test is really for our benefit